I'm Brooke Brown from Teach Outside the Box. Welcome back to my holiday STEM challenge series. It is February, one of the busiest months of the year. We have lots of different things going on at school, as I know you do too. Um, of course, Valentine's Day is in February, right in the middle of the month. So I love to kind of structure all different sorts of activities before Valentine's Day and after Valentine's Day. So the challenges I'm gonna share with you today are, can be Valentine's themed, or you can extend them throughout the entire month. They're also perfect for Valentine's party day, that crazy day when you need to keep your kids engaged, you need to keep them busy. You can set these up in stations. Um, a lot of teachers like to partner lower grade classes with upper grade classes for these challenges because they are appropriate for kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. So I'm gonna share some of my favorite Valentine's Day challenges with you, and I'm gonna walk you through one of my favorites, which is called the airmail challenge, which is a paper airplane. So for the airmail challenge, you want to throw, you want to deliver a secret message to your friend across the room. So you're going to construct a paper airplane that will fly the farthest distance. This may seem like a very basic and a very simple challenge for upper grades. I use this with my second graders and my partner who teaches third through fifth grade also uses it with upper grades because there are so many different extensions that you can take. So what we're focusing on in this particular challenge is the four forces of flight, gravity, thrust, lift, and drag. Um, and a paper airplane exhibits all four of those forces for the upper grades, you can maybe extend it to have them design all different types of paper airplanes and have them aim for a specific force. So specifically aiming for lift, um, maybe for distance is a goal that they are going for. With the lower ones, I want to try to do just distance for that first goal that we're trying to achieve. So to introduce this particular challenge, I always use the book called After the Fall. This is one of my all-time favorite STEM books. It is by Dan Santat, and it's called How Humpty Dumpty Got Back Up Again. So it is a twist on Humpty Dumpty, of course, but on the back it says, life begins when you get back up. So if you're familiar with the traditional nursery rhyme, of course he gets broken and then his kingsmen have to put him back together again. So the twist in this book is that he actually has a fear of heights and a fear of climbing a wall after he falls and he has to overcome that fear because one of his favorite things to do is to climb that wall and to watch the birds at the top. So it's a great example of teaching kids to overcome their fears and persevere, kind of overcome those difficulties and adversities. And what ends up happening is he ends up overcoming his fear, he climbs the wall. Um, he actually creates some paper airplanes in the book so it's a great connection to this particular challenge. When he gets to the top of the wall, there's a twist ending. He hatches out of the egg and he becomes a bird and he flies himself. So a totally different twist on Humpty Dumpty. It's kind of those one of those books where the kids clap at the very end. It's a wonderful story to share with your kids and the perfect introduction to the airmail challenge. As always, we want to prime our kids' background knowledge by showing them some real-world examples of what they are creating. So I show them these photos of airplanes and we discuss what is similar and what is different about the different models. And then we also compare and contrast different parts of the airplane to a paper airplane. Um, they love learning that high-level vocabulary. Fuselage is one that they like using in class. So when they draw their blueprints of an airplane, they actually label the wings and they label the fuselage just like a real airplane. We talk about those four forces of flight, and we also talk about other things that use forces of flight and kind of compare how the forces of flight are used in different types of models, such as parachutes or drones or helicopters um, or even birds. So your students can scan these QR codes to watch some videos to kind of build their background knowledge about flight, or you can show them as a whole class on the interactive whiteboard if you click these links right here. This is the one that I always show first. It talks about the four forces of flight. It shows an airplane and a pilot in action, and he kind of explains each piece of the forces of flight as it is shown on the video. This is a quick backstory about the Wright brothers and their contributions to the inventions of flight. This is the resource that my students use throughout the entire challenge. It is called foldandfly.com. It has tutorials for all different kinds of paper airplanes and they are ranked from easy to hard. It also has videos for how to construct those paper airplanes and I'll show you a little bit more on fold and fly in just a little bit. This is just an extra video on how to make a simple basic paper airplane if you're working with little bitty students and they need one particular model to work with, this is one that you want to go for. So the key vocabulary you want your students to walk away from at the end of this challenge are those four forces of flight, thrust, drag, lift, and gravity. When I line my students up at the door, I have them kind of rephrase and recapture what we learned that day, and these are the four words that we really try to emphasize. So of course we talk about thrust is your arm in this particular challenge with throwing the paper airplane. Drag is the force that's going to slowly pull it down to the ground, and we talk about different airplane designs that minimize drag uh, versus ones that are going to increase it. 
Lift is that force that's gonna keep it up off the ground and gravity is the force that is going to pull it back down to earth. As always, I have two different forms of differentiated organizers for your kids. They're going to draw a blueprint of their airplanes. I also have them label the parts that they are included on the particular organizer that I showed you at the beginning. Um, so they can label the fuselage, they can label the wings or any other parts of their plane that happen to be relevant. They then define the different forces of flight and they're going to measure how far their airplane travels. So this is kind of experimental for your students because they're gonna have time to make more than one design of a paper airplane and they're gonna see that some certain designs are going to travel a lot farther than others. It's a great way for them to compare and contrast different models. So for the older students, they are actually going to analyze which design flew the farthest and why, um, kind of determining and relating it back to those forces of flight. And they're also going to write about what improvements they made to their design. So I don't always have my students use specific resources when they're creating a particular design, but for paper airplanes, you never know what kind of prior experience your students are going to come in with. Some of them will already have a design in mind. They may have some experience creating paper airplanes on their own, and some of them have, may have never tried them before. So my favorite resource to use is called foldandfly.com. Um, it's ranked from easy to medium to hard. It shows step-by-step -step pictures for what they're going to do to fold them in certain steps to build the paper airplanes. And then they can also click on videos so they can pause and watch the more complicated designs. This allows them for them to try lots of different designs of airplanes. So once my kids finish their entire blueprint, they measure them three times, then they can go back and they can try maybe a medium or a hard design to challenge themselves a little bit further. These are three different examples of the different types of paper airplane, the basic, the basic dart, and the stable. Um, these are three designs that I encourage my students to try if they don't have any experience with paper airplanes, and then they can move on to more advanced designs. Also included in my February STEM pack is the House of Cards Challenge. This is a huge favorite among all grade levels. The lower levels can use a little bit of masking tape as an adhesive to kind of connect those different cards in different ways. And then the upper grades can challenge themselves by getting rid of the tape altogether and just relying on their sense of balance and structure. So we're hitting on 3D solids on this particular challenge. Your kids are going to determine which structure is stronger, a triangular prism or a rectangular prism. And we're also building that vocabulary of the truss, which your kids are going to see in bridges that they pass, a, really, a strong structure that is used in all sorts of architecture. One of the key tips that I share with my students before beginning this challenge is to lay their cards flat side by side and tape them together first before wrapping them around to make a triangular prism or a rectangular prism. This is something that I model for them before the challenge to kind of set the little ones up to be a little bit more successful. So the third challenge in my February STEM pack is the candy box challenge. And this is great for all of that leftover candy that you need to try to find a way to incorporate in the class, or maybe candy that no one in your house is eating at the moment. You can bring it to school and have your kids construct a candy box that will hold the most pieces of candy. So with my kindergartners, I have them use Lego. I give them some small base plates to kind of give them a guidance for the base of that box. And they're hitting on volume and capacity and kind of exposing them to that for the first time. So keep in mind they can build candy boxes out of just about anything. You can give them Play-Doh so they can make little dishes, they can make origami boxes out of paper. Um, all different kinds of materials can be used for the candy box challenge. So those are my February Valentine's Day challenges. I kept it short and sweet because I know you are super busy. It is the month of February, and I know that you're ready to get back to your class and get some learning in action. I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day with your students, and thank you so much for joining me.